Jumping back into Transformers Prime today, let's talk about the episode New Recruit and why, even though this is a perfectly fine episode that does very little more than introduce a perfectly fine new character, I'm still kind of salty towards it and, in fact, this entire era of the show. While deleting pictures of Bumblebee, because Bumblebee is kind of a reckless shit who gets caught by human cameras sometimes, the kids are on the internet and they happen to stumble upon a picture that someone took of a Cybertronian escape pod landing on Earth. Recognizing that this is a big deal, it's either a new enemy that they're going to have to deal with going forward, or potentially a new ally, which they could really use, especially considering that Wheeljack pissed everybody off, so now they're not letting him in the base right now. The entire team, Sans Bulkhead, who is still recovering from what happened to him in the recent few episodes, his legs still don't work great, go to the site of the crash and discover an empty Decepticon pod. And then they're ambushed by a bunch of Decepticon drones. During the battle, though, a new Autobot named Smokescreen, bearing the symbol of the Autobot Elite Guard, shows up and helps them drive the Decepticons off by doing a cool thing entirely by accident. Yet he still takes credit for the save and he's very big headed and pompous, but he seems like his intentions are good. The fact that he's an elite guard member and the fact that he was assigned to protect Alpha Trion, Optimus's old mentor, says a lot about him, especially considering that he knows details about how Optimus became a prime that only someone who Alpha Trion trusted could possibly know. And all he talks about is proving himself. He wanted to be a soldier in the Autobot cause so he could prove himself. And now that he's here with Optimus, he sees his chance. So if he's a little eager to do that, then that makes total sense. And maybe he should be given the benefit of the doubt. But thankfully, our characters are savvy enough this episode that they actually do treat him with a healthy dose of suspicion. Their ranks have been infiltrated before. They should be wary, even if he does have a good story for how he ended up in a Decepticon pod. But Optimus at least trusts him. That bond that he clearly had with Alpha Trion is enough for that. Still, when a mission comes up pretty much immediately after he joins the Team Prime ranks, Optimus insists that he stay behind because one, he doesn't have an Earth Alt mode yet, and two, he hasn't trained enough yet to work with them, to understand how they do things. Now, the mission in question being something pretty interesting, actually. They've located a meteor made of a rare kind of energon that lets you tap into the speed force and go super speed. And unfortunately for them, Starscream has spotted it as well, and he still has that really cool juggernaut armor thing. So Optimus, Bumblebee, and RC clash with him, and they aren't making much headway. Thankfully, though, Smokescreen worked with Alpha Trion in the Autobot Hall of Records. He knows about the relics and how they work. So he recognizes immediately that the phase shifter from several episodes back can be used to counter Starscream's apex armor. And so he has Ratchet bridge him to the site of the battle, separates Starscream from the armor using the phase shifter, and even though Starscream gets away with the Energon, they get the apex armor and keep the phase shifter. So end of the day, this is a pretty major victory because even Optimus going all out and dropping Starscream off of crane towers and stuff wasn't denting this armor. Getting it for themselves is a big deal. And so even though originally Smokescreen was just gonna take the phase shifter and go without permission, and he only ended up asking Ratchet for permission because Ratchet caught him, Optimus still commends him. He scolds him a bit, but he still commends him. And it definitely feels by the end of the episode that we're supposed to trust this guy, but be wary about him for other reasons now, because he is kind of reckless and he hasn't really done anything as of yet to prove that that's changed. And, th and that's the episode. Starscream doesn't have the armor anymore, but he has this cool Flash Energon stuff. The Decepticons may or may not be aware that the Autobots have a new recruit, depending on whether or not any of those drones manage to get back to Megatron to 
report in. Bulkhead is still out of commission, at least for the time being. And now there's this new character shaking up the dynamic of the team. We are just past halfway through the second season of this show, and this is a really cool status quo setter. This is the kind of episode that gets you fired up for what comes next. And frankly, I've revisited, I don't revisit Prime episodes a lot in general, but I've revisited the episodes that come after this one less than the ones that come before it. So I'm pretty excited about getting to these episodes too, but man, I don't like Smokescreen. And not because I don't like Smokescreen, I like the character. But this is going to be absolutely meaningless to anyone who doesn't know Transformers. Why is he not Hot Rod? For those who don't know, Hot Rod was a character introduced in the Transformers the movie, the animated movie which bridged the gap between Season 2 and Season 3 of the original Transformers cartoon. And when Optimus died in that movie, Hot Rod replaced him, becoming the new bearer of the Matrix of Leadership and evolving into Rodimus Prime. You got the touch! You got the Arise, Rodimus Prime. Optimus. And, uh, spoiler for Smokescreen's arc in this show, he's that. If for this show. So why is he not Hot Rod? L like, his character traits are basically Hot Rod's character traits. Hot Rod was also a young, ambitious, and reckless, big-headed character who wanted to prove himself but didn't really think through how best to do that, but still had a lot of potential. Everything, everything to make this a really cool reinterpretation of Hot Rod is here, and they use Smokescreen? This isn't Smokescreen. This is nothing like Smokescreen. To the point that I don't even buy this as an alternate interpretation of smokescreen the same way that I buy like Wheeljack as Wheeljack from the original show but like his life took a different turn really early on or something right this this just isn't smokescreen it's clearly hot rod and it all goes back to the fact that man fans really don't like hot rod or Rodimus Prime like he's started to get more love lately the comics from what I understand have done some pretty interesting stuff with him and he got a leader class toy a while back and he's getting two toys in current toy lines in fact i think one of them is actually out a studio series version of his hot rod form both of which look really good but i'm more interested in the rodimus prime toy that's still upcoming so i'm, I'm probably gonna skip the studio series one right but man people really don't like him because they they kind of wrote him dumb in a few episodes of season three of the original show but that, that's not the character's fault. They, they just didn't know how to use him, right? And because he replaced Optimus Prime. And there are still a lot of fans who are salty that Optimus died. But to that I say, get over it, man. Most people like RC and Ultra Magnus and Cup, the other Autobots who made up the primary cast of the Transformers the movie, effectively replacing all of the other Autobots who died in the movie aside from Optimus, so why give so much hate to Rodimus? He's a perfectly fine character. And making this character him, but the aligned continuity version of him, could have been amazing. Like, I don't know if they had already used him elsewhere in the aligned continuity in, like, a book or something, or a video game, maybe, or they had plans to use him elsewhere, but this cartoon is... The flagship iteration, the flagship representation of the Align continuity. If you're going to use Rodimus, use him here. Don't just give his story arc to somebody else. And certainly, after giving his story arc to somebody else, don't just steal that story arc from that somebody else and give it to Bumblebee for Prime's sequel R.I.D. Which is what they did. Smokescreen didn't even get to finish out his arc because they just transplanted it to Bumblebee for the sequel. This character is basically worthless. He's entertaining enough, but him being here doesn't really amount to anything. At least as far as I recall. Maybe I'm wrong. I certainly hope I am going into this next era of the show. But man, just seeing him again annoyed the heck out of me. Because 
I find this whole situation so annoying. And famously, I don't really know much about the background of this show. A lot of you guys who watch these reviews know more about the background of the show than I do, so if there's some reason why Smokescreen is not Hot Rod, please let me know. I'd very much like to know the answer to that question. Why is he not just Hot Rod? Because it doesn't make any sense to me. And if the answer legitimately is he was in one of the video games or something and so couldn't have been in this too, my response to that is just going to be, then he shouldn't have been in the video game, right? I don't know. I have Smokescreen, the toy of Smokescreen, on my Prime display. I don't hate the character as he is in this. I think he's fine. It's more the decisions that created him that frustrate me, right? Hopefully, rewatching this era of the show, I'll be able to get over that and have fun. But in case I don't, just be prepared for some way more whingy reviews in the near future. All that said, though, his introduction was at least handled really well. I do like that Bulkhead is trying to be supportive of him, pointing out when he does well, but he still resents him because he feels like he's being replaced by this new guy. I like how wary the other characters were of him initially, showing more savvy than they typically tend to show in situations like this in this show. And I do like the fact that he is still portrayed as a good person and an asset despite his flaws, because he is a hero, that should be how he's portrayed. And it's really cool that there's now someone other than Optimus who has some knowledge of that Iacon database. That's, that's a really cool shakeup to the dynamic of this show. As per usual though, I'd like to know what you guys think of the Transformers Prime episode New Recruit. If you have seen it, let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, you might as well like the video and share it with anyone else you think might enjoy my content. Subscribe if you haven't. Like seriously, if you're someone who shows up to watch my content and you aren't subscribed, you really should be. YouTube's changing up how it sends out notifications again, and it's, it's really, really crappy. Guys, you really should be subscribed if you hope to see my stuff. You can also check out my social medias. They'll be linked in the video description. But either way, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later.